So you can download my Insta stories either from Creative Market or from my Etsy shop. If you're downloading from my Etsy shop, you're going to get a PDF with your purchase. That PDF will have a link to download from a Google Drive. And if you're downloading from Creative Market, what's nice is if you go to my profile, um, you'll be able to actually click on any purchases you make and you'll see them in the cloud. So if you click on this little cloud icon, you'll see all the past purchases you've made and you can click on them and re-download them. But typically when you click on a file, for example, here in my Bella Sofia Creative, Creative Market Shop, and you complete your purchase, you can do it with credits or you can just add to your cart and play with a credit card, it'll automatically download your file for you. So once you've made your purchase and you've downloaded this file, and this works for any file too that you may be downloading that's similar to something like this, whether it's like an Instagram or Insta Stories bundle, um, the process will be pretty much similar. Um, with Etsy though, the reason why you typically will get a PDF download um, is due to the size constraints that Etsy shop owners have to adhere to when it comes to these types of digital products. We can only upload 20 megabytes at a time and many of these files are much larger than this. So what we end up having to do is creating a PDF with a link to um, a secure download that you'll be able to access. So once you've downloaded your file, we're gonna find it in your system. So I'm gonna navigate to where I save all of my files in my system. So in this case, I have it in my Artsy Insta Stories file. You'll find it in your downloads and you're gonna have a zip. You're going to need to be able to unzip this file. Um, if you have a Mac, you'll automatically be able to unzip by just double clicking. Um, and then this new file will appear and it'll be called Art Insta Stories to Upload. And so in my case, I'm going to be using this in an Affinity Designer, but I do have a PSD file for those who use Photoshop and I have an EPS file for, for those who use Illustrator. It's also important to note that before you open up these files, you will want to install your font. So in this case, um, I utilize the Aisling and the Andale Mano font. So what you're going to do is right click your fonts and you're going to select open with and select font book and then you'll get this pop-up and then all you're gonna do is hit install font I'm not gonna do this because I already have this font in my system but if you don't have this font in your system and you want to be able to access and um, access the font and ensure that the files will look the way I created them to look you will want to install these fonts so you're gonna install the alternative and the regular and again you'll just right click it open with and select font book you can double click, but I do have um, Glyphs Mini, which is a font making tool. So if I double click, it's gonna go to that automatically. Then you're gonna wanna go to your last font, right click it, open with font book, and then hit install. And this basically installs all the system fonts that you'll need to be able to open up your file appropriately. I've also included in this set icons that are used in the editable file, instructions, on how to use the actual file itself. I take you step by step, but I also wanted to do a visual to go along with it like what we're doing here. Um, and this instruction manual just basically shows you how to install the file, how to install the file, as well as how you change your images. Cause that's the main key area that you're hoping to update with these is the images and the text. And that's what we're gonna go through today. But I also have this written step-by-step -step instruction manual um, that comes along with this download as well. So outside of the instructions, you'll have JPEG files. These are just basically the files that I use for my previews, um, just so you can see how everything looks and what the you know overall vibe and feel is for these layouts. And then I also have the photos. So what you'll find is when you open up the file, if these photos aren't in, aren't on your system, you may end up having link issues where your images will end up looking pixelated or blurry. I've kind of sidestepped that by ensuring that I have a file with all the photos listed inside um, of the Insta Story template so that you know exactly where to access them. And but what I'm gonna be using today is the Affinity Designer file. 
I have a template version and then the Affinity Designer just software file itself. So I'm just going to open that one today and then we'll get started on working in this template. Once you double click, what you'll find is the Affinity Designer software program will pop up. I'm just going to enter full screen so that we can see what we're working with and you'll see that there are 10 artboards. So each artboard is basically your post for your Insta stories. And I've organized them in your layer system over here, artboard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And what you'll see is that each of these artboards have nested files within them. If you click the little down arrow button on artboard 10, you'll see each of the elements inside of this. So the lines to create the separation for your location, your background with your image, um, your button to click for more, to register, your location icon, and then all the text as well. So what you will likely want to edit is the text and the pictures. So we're gonna close this artboard and we're gonna go down to artboard one and I'm gonna select that little left hand arrow so that it's pointing downwards and the curves are the paint strokes and the text is what we'll edit first. So if we select the text that says new post, you'll see a little blue guiding box will pop around the text in this area on this artboard. We're gonna select our frame text tool and then we're going to click inside of it. You can double click to select it or you can just click inside and you can change this to whatever you want. And if you notice that your text is too long, all you have to do is, is widen your text bounding box. So I'll just pull out the blue section so that it gives me more length. And then I can select my little black arrow tool in the left hand corner here and then I can move the text around. And you can do this with every single one of these text elements. So same thing with your second set of text. You can just click on it using your frame text tool, highlight it as you would if you're working in a Word document and then just update the text as you see fit. You can also change your button text as well. Um, change it to something like read more or you can just keep it as is. Now let's scroll down a bit and what you'll notice too is with like the buttons I've grouped them together. Whenever you see a drop down arrow it's typically, it's typically because items are nested and grouped together. This allows you to move each element all together versus separate. So if I click on that down arrow and I select just the rounded rectangle, I can move that by itself or I can move the text by itself. But if I want to move everything to all together, I want to click the actual button group and then that will move everything all at once and it just keeps it a little bit more easy to handle. The torn paper is the actual torn paper element and then if you select background, you'll notice there is a drop arrow because it is grouped together. This is where you'll be able to change your text. So if you click on background, select your drop down arrow, and then you'll see it. You'll see a file that says replace image here. You can double click it and then you can do file, place, and then you can find a new image and then hit open and then click anywhere within your artboard and then what you're going to have to do is resize it. You'll often notice that your my images are typically going to be bigger than the artboard itself which is fine. Um, so to do that all you're going to do is hold shift so that you can keep your proportions and click on your corner of your bounding box and you'll get this little double like double arrow and then you can drag in and if you notice things are still not in proportion, you could also select command and then drag in and it'll keep everything in proportion. If you find that the 
paper portion is um, invading too much space of your actual visual image. What's nice is you can use your direct selection arrow, that little black arrow, and you can select that torn paper and you can move it around using your arrow so that you can see more of your picture above. And then same thing, you can select the curves with your paint on it and move them around using your mouse or you can use your up and down, left and right keys on your keyboard so that you get smaller increments. I hope you guys find this helpful and that it helps you when it comes to working with these Instagram template and Story bundles. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.